Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I am going to show you how you can create a zombie shooter game. So before I start the video, a huge shout out to all the people who support the channel on Patreon. So if you want to support the channel yourself, you can head over to my Patreon page. So in this video, we are going to create a simple zombie shooter game and we are going to create it in core. So core is a free platform that you can use to create games for free. I will highly suggest you to download core. So link is in the description. So after you have installed core, just open it. So this is a create panel and you can create your project from here. So we have an option to create a new project or we can choose some gameplay framework. So they have these gameplay frameworks here. Pretty cool. So we are going to start with a blank project. You can name this project to whatever you like. And you can create your project. So to move around in the viewport, you can press your right mouse button and then you can press W, S, A and D. And that is how you move in the viewport. Okay. So first let's select this flow. So just click on it and just delete this flow. So you can press your delete key to do that. So let's create a landscape. So to create a landscape, you can go to the terrain generator and you can generate a new terrain and you can choose the flat terrain option and you can just reduce the size of your landscape and generate the terrain. So there you go. Our terrain has been generated. Now let's add some materials on this. So it's pretty easy. Just select the landscape, go in the paint panel right here. And here you are going to see these material options. And by default, we have this cool grass material. This looks pretty good. If you want to change the tiling of this material, you can just edit these materials like that. And these are four materials right here. So if I just expand this, we have four materials. So this is the first one that we want to edit. So in the material one, you can change the scale of this. So for instance, 0.5 and 0.5 and now you can see we have less repetition in the texture so you could do this for all four materials so for instance if you want to paint something in your landscape you can just select this material and you can click to paint on the terrain so it's that easy so i'm just going to paint some ground dirt here just click to paint Okay, this looks pretty good. So if you want to paint some other material, you can always select the other material and you can paint. So this is a pretty cool and easy workflow. Okay, now let's add some uh, grass elements here. Let's add some foliage. So you can select the foliage panel. You can go to the foliage panel from here and you can add a new foliage. In the foliage panel, you will see all of these meshes. So you can add all of these meshes as foliage assets, but you can search for grass and just add this grass. So you can add both of them. So now we have two variants right here. One is the grass short and one is the grass tall. If you want this grass to appear on a specific material, you can give it a material channel. So just select the grass and just, you can change the material channel from here. Okay, you can also decrease the distance of this. So if I decrease the distance, we have more grass in the scene. So you can play with all these settings pretty self explanatory. I'm just going to leave it like that. If you want to change the material, so I didn't show you this. So if you want to change this third material, for instance, you can go to edit materials, go to the third material, double click here. So if you want to add some brick materials, you can completely do that. So the search for bricks and you can add these materials. So I'm going to add a rocky path material here. Let's see what we find. Yeah, this looks good. So I'm just going to leave it to that for now. But as you can see, core has a lot of materials that you can use in your games. So feel free to play with this. 
so as you can see this looks pretty good so if you want to test the game you can press the play button and as you can see the character can walk pretty cool now let's add some enemies so you can go to the community content and the community content panel contains all of the stuff that is created by the core community so you can just search for zombies and let's see zombies doesn't work so let's just search for zombie now and there we go we have a zombie enemy so you can import this to your game and just save this so now the zombie enemy has been imported you can see it right here under the core content so i'm going to just drag this in the scene and as you can see these are four zombies so let's test this out now and if you test this out you get a error and these zombies can attack you but they can't damage you so let's see what this error is so we have two errors here the first error is saying that we have multiple scripts under the same object so let's fix this if you open up the zombie prototype you can see that these are in a group so we just need to ungroup these so select all of these and just move it outside de instance and reparent and just read this now you can select this right click and you can create a new template from this so do this for all the zombies and now that error is gone but we are getting one more error and this error is saying that we are missing a script called the standard combat dependencies so now we need to import that script so you can go to the community content and you can just search for sci-fi and a sci-fi kit has this script so you can find that script in this asset so it's called the sci-fi and pc kit And we have this combat dependencies. So we need this combat dependencies. Just add this in your scene. So let's add a rifle right here. This is just a basic gun that can damage the enemies. So let's test this out. So let's pick up the gun. And as you can see, we can kill these zombies. So everything is working pretty well. We have an error right here. And this error is saying that it is playing the wrong animation but this doesn't matter for now so i'm just going to ignore it i'm going to change the health of these zombies so you can just select all of these zombies shift select all of them and you can change this current health variable to something like 100 and once you do that select each individual asset right here and just apply this so this is going to update the template so the player can pick up this gun the player can shoot these zombies so now i'm going to show you how you can spawn these enemies so to add spawn points you can go to the community content and we can easily create a script that spawns enemies but in this video i'm going to use a script that many people use so you can just search for actually you know what it's the first asset right here we are going to import this npc ai kit and this contains all the AI behaviors. And here we have an ambush camp example. So just drag this in your scene right here. So as you can see, this has some assets and it also has some scripts. So if we expand this, we have some decorations. So you can just delete this if you want. And we also have some spawn points. And if you select an individual spawn point, in the properties you can see what it's spawning so now we need to just change these to our own zombies i'm also going to delete one spawn point so you can select this zombie right click on one zombie and you can find this and there we go we have our four enemy zombies so now it's just a matter to select these spawn points and drag this 
in the slots. So basically we have changed these enemies to our own enemies. So let me pick up the gun and this is the spawn point. So if the player enters this, these zombies are being spawned and as you can see these zombies have a health of 100. So if you didn't update the template, these zombies will have an health of 500. So make sure that you update templates every time you make changes. Lastly, let's add some trees. So under the core content, you can search for trees. So you could just drag this in your scene like that. But a better way to do that is to use the object generator. You can go to window and object generator. The object generator allows you to place objects at the cursor position. So make sure that this tree is selected. Move your cursor right here and you can press shift X and that is going to spawn a tree right there. So shift X to spawn trees. So this is pretty easy. So let's make a forest here. Now let's swap out the gun. So if you want to make your own gun right here, you need to select the destructible rifle that we added. And let's go to the core content and let's search for guns. So I'm going to add this advanced shotgun in the scene. Just drag this. So now we have two guns here. We have the destructible rifle that we added and we have also added the shotgun. So the shotgun will not work now. It will not damage our enemies because it's missing a script. So let's copy that script from the destructible rifle. That script is called destructible weapon server. So you can just copy this and you can go to the shotgun. So just select the shotgun and you can select the shotgun main parent object, right click and paste and move it up right here instance and reparent you will have to again make this into a template so right click and you can create a new template from this so now we have a shotgun so now we can delete the destructible rifle that we added and as you can see finally let's add some ui so you can go to the core content and i'm going to add the player health so you can search for health and you can add this health bar in the scene. So there you go. We have the health. You can customize this. So I'll just test this out first. So for instance, if you wanted to change the color of this health bar, you can select the health bar and you could go down into the canvas, into the panel, I believe, and into the progress bar. And here you have the fill color, so you can maybe change it to a red color. So there we go. I hope you like this video. And this video was made to cover the basics. So if you are starting out with game development, this video is really perfect for you. And as you can see, Core is very powerful. It's a very powerful tool. You can really create good games. And it's pretty cool. I generally use this for prototyping my ideas. So this is a very good tool for fast prototyping and level design. So yeah, that's it. I hope you like this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. That's it. I am going to see you in the next video.